Hi, I'm Kevin and I'm a geek. I really like working on mathematical problems and explaining them to people. I've retired from a job at a big industrial research lab where a lot of my work consisted of just that. Now that I'm on my own for a while, I'm looking for whether I can get the same sort of fun out of explaining things in videos. A lot of what I've done involves various aspects of geometry, but I'm likely to stray far and wide because the field of mathematics is all connected. In this video, I'll begin to explore the mathematical concepts of a pencil and an envelope. We'll be building up to a demonstration of a cardioid produced by string art. String art, like the spirograph, was a popular craft in the 1960s and 1970s. To produce it, pins were stuck in a board, and then colored thread was woven about the pins, pulled taut. Or holes were punched in a card, and again, taut threads were stitched between them. Even though a taut thread runs in a straight line, the craft produced figures that approximated sweeping curves using sequences of tangent lines. Quite complex pieces like this eagle could be produced. String art is actually older than that. It was originally proposed in 1904 by the mathematician Mary Everest Boole, the wife of the George Boole of Boolean algebra, and the niece of the geographer George Everest, after whom Mount Everest is named, as an aid for teaching mathematics to children. I don't nearly, know nearly enough about her and her work. Female scholars prior to the late 20th century are largely ignored in the histories. Several of her daughters, and at least one grandson, became distinguished mathematicians and scientists in their own right. Let's look at the simplest of string art, so let's get to the idea of what we're about to do with it. We'll set two rows of equally spaced pins at right angles to one another. And we'll stretch the strings from pin to pin in sequence. The lines appear to approximate a curve. If we add more pins and more strings, we appear to approximate the curve more closely. But what is this curve? Let's begin with coming up with an implicit formula for a single string. We'll stretch the string from a position v units up on the y-axis to a position u units to the right on the x-axis. We'll express the formula for the spring in parametric form. Introduce a parameter t that varies from 0 at one endpoint to 1 at the other. The x-coordinate varies linearly from 0 at t equals 0 to u at t equal 1, so x equals u times t. And y falls linearly from v at t equals 0 to 0 at t equals 1, so y equals v times the quantity 1 minus t. We multiply both sides of the x equation by v and both sides of the y equation by u. When we add the two pairs of equal quantities and subtract the right-hand side from both sides to put the equation in standard form, we get a simple equation that relates x and y with no parameter t and no unexpected problems with division by zero if either u or v is zero. Now let's work on the set of strings. How do u and v vary? Let's assume for simplicity that both of them vary from zero to one and that as u goes linearly from 0 to 1, v will fall linearly from 1 to 0. So v is 1 minus u, and we can eliminate v from the formula for the individual lines. But how does this formula help us? To understand how it helps, we need to examine the mathematical concepts of a pencil and an envelope. These don't refer to office supplies any more than the cardioid refers to the winner of a rapper lookalike contest. Instead, of course, they're mathematical concepts. A pencil is a family of curves that depend on a single parameter and can be expressed in implicit form. You'll see the equation above defines a pencil, in which the curves happen to be straight lines. But they don't have to be straight lines. We can speak of a pencil of circles, or a pencil of parabolas, or indeed any curve we choose. You've probably noticed that all of these examples have a curve that's approximated by segments of the curves that make up the pencil, and that adding more curves to the pencil makes the approximation closer. We can formalize this mathematically. 
It's the locus of all the xy coordinates, for which the function that defines the pencil and its partial derivative with respect to the parameter are both zero. This definition is somewhat mysterious. We really need to take a harder look at where it comes from. Let's begin by drawing one element of the pencil for some value u of the parameter. Draw another element of the pencil corresponding to a value of u plus h for the parameter for some small value of h. Look at the point of intersection, which we'll call x sub i, y sub i. At that point, if there is one, the values of the function corresponding to the parameter values u and u plus h must both be zero, and things equal to the same thing are equal to each other. Their difference must be zero, and it makes no difference if we divide both sides of the equation by h. As we consider a pair of lines that are getting closer and closer together, h will get smaller and smaller. So we take the limit of the left-hand side as h approaches zero. But when we look at this, this is just the formula for partial differentiation with respect to u. If you're just starting on your journey through calculus, you will most, night li most likely not have seen this curly letter d before or heard the term partial derivative. To compute a partial derivative with respect to one of the arguments of a function of several variables, you simply differentiated as if it were a function of just that argument, assuming that the other values are held constant. It's called a partial derivative because it tells only part of the story. For example, in this case, we know that x and y at the point of the intersection will vary with respect to u, but the partial derivative does not take that into account. There's more calculation that involves the derivatives of x and y with respect to u that would be needed to make an ordinary derivative. We don't need that here, though. The partial derivative is exactly the formula we were looking for. If you can differentiate the function that defines the pencil and find a root of it, you can find the envelope. So as a warm-up to envelopes, let's look at the simple string art we've been discussing. The formula that we derived for the equations of the individual lines in the pencil is at the upper right. Our first step is to differentiate with respect to the parameter and set the partial derivative to zero. We can use this to get u in terms of x and y. And substituting this into the formula for the lines gives the formula for the envelope. There will be a lot of terms to expand here and a lot of calculation. I'm not going to run through all the algebra. At the end, it will simplify to six terms. We could solve this equation to get y in terms of x, but I'm going to go after the curve in a slightly different way. Let's factor out some more things. And now let's define a new coordinate system P and Q that's tilted 45 degrees with respect to X and Y. When we rewrite X plus Y and X minus Y as the appropriate multiples of P and Q, we can tell by inspection that the formula defines a parabola and we can plot it easily. So now we have the tools that we need to attack just about any envelope problem. Next time, we'll continue warming up our mathematical muscles and tackle a problem involving an envelope of circles. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, stay healthy, and keep calculating.